caffeine pills. They exist apparently. Now, I don't know who's out there eating their caffeine in pill form, but thanks because now there's a cheap and easy source of caffeine for us. Now, I'm not the first one to have done this, but watching some of the other videos on it, I think that there's some room for improvement. Uh, there's one really big thing that I want to point out, and that's dichloromethane. Is I use dichloromethane oh of either dichloromethane or solvents most commonly used for dissolving caffeine is dichloromethane. So dichloromethane. We're not going to use any dichloromethane. Uh, I'll explain why in a bit, but first let me say, uh, don't try this at home. It's not safe. Uh, legally, I'm advised to uh, tell you don't try this at home, but, um, but stay tuned while I perform this at my home. So I'm going to start by grinding these things up. Uh, they don't need to be ground up that much. You probably don't need to grind them up at all, but I think that it helps stir it, helps dissolve it better. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. Uh, fortunately for me, there's this little uh, lab tech supply company in my area, uh, Goodwill. They sell little things like uh, coffee grinders for, this one was $4. So first we'll grind it up. And then we'll transfer it to a hot plate here. I'm going to go ahead and add the stir bar. And we're going to want to add enough water just to get it nice and thick. We don't want it to be too thin or it's going to ruin the process later. So what's going on here? What's the game plan? Well, if we look at caffeine structure, we can get some idea of how it's going to dissolve. So you can see here we got the molecule for caffeine. We got nitrogen, oxygen, and carbons. All of these little intersections here where nothing is written, it's those are just carbons. So what we want to note with this is there's a lot of carbons bound to oxygens and nitrogens bound to carbons. So oxygens and nitrogens bound to carbons, those make up what are called polar bonds. Oxygens and nitrogens are very electronegative and carbons are not so electronegative. So when they make bonds, we call them polar bonds. You can think of them as poles on a compass. Now, when you have a molecule like this caffeine with a lot of these polar bonds on it, you can think of the whole molecule itself as polar. Uh, there's some exceptions, but when it's complicated like this, it's usually just, you could go and say it's polar. So what does that mean when you have a polar molecule? Well, polar molecules like to interact with other polar molecules, and they'll have like this little polar bond dance party. And this little dance is basically how things dissolve. So polar liquids like water and dichloromethane are really good at dissolving polar solids like caffeine. So I'm just going to use water because it's safer and easier to come by. So if we take a look at the ingredients, we can see we got caffeine here as expected. This is going to dissolve in water. And if we take a look at all the other ingredients, you can see we got cornstarch here. The molecules in that are way too big to dissolve in water. Dibasic calcium phosphate, if you look it up you can see that that doesn't dissolve. Same for most of this other stuff. Silicon dioxide. Silicon dioxide. Sand. They put sand in this? So if all of these things were soluble, that would be great. But unfortunately, we've got a big problem here. DNC yellow number 10 aluminum lake and dextrate hydrate. These things suck. You can see here from all these polar bonds, these things are insanely polar. That makes them very water soluble. Looking it up, they both dissolve in water way better than caffeine. So we'll keep that in mind, because that's going to be our exploit for separating them later. So now we know it dissolves in water. What does that tell us? Basically, all these soluble things that we said before are going to dissolve in the water, while all this insoluble junk is just going to be floating around as a solid. And since all that soluble stuff is dissolved, and all the insoluble stuff is solid, when we filter it off, we're left with all the solid stuff on top, and this yellow caffeinated Sunny D water at the bottom. 
It's good to see that it's yellow, because that means that there's yellow number 10 aluminum light dissolved in it. So now that we have all this caffeine, D and C, yellow number 10, dextrate hydrated water, how are we supposed to get just the caffeine out? So to explain this, let's use a hypothetical. Let's assume that we have 100 milliliters of ice cold water. We could dissolve a maximum of 0 0.6 grams of caffeine in that. But if the water was boiling hot, we could get 66 grams of caffeine to dissolve in the same amount of water. So if we take this hot yellow caffeine water and then we pour it into this beaker here, when we cool it down, the water won't be able to hold on to all of that caffeine. So you should start to see caffeine crystals forming here. Now don't be confused. The water, the caffeine, nothing's freezing here. The water's just getting really cold and it can no longer hold on to all the caffeine. So the caffeine starts to form these relatively pure caffeine crystals. But what about all these other things? Well, something interesting is actually happening here. Because caffeine doesn't like to dissolve in water as much as all this other stuff, caffeine is going to fall out of the water first. Then all of this other stuff is just going to be left behind inside of the water. This process is called recrystallization. So you can see we have all the caffeine crystallized here. And it looks like it's one big solid chunk, but it's actually a bunch of caffeine crystals and they sort of make this spongy clump with all the liquid stuck inside. So if we run it through a filter again, then we can get all of the solids to stay on top again and we can get all the liquid to come out of the bottom. Now because it's hard to get all of the liquid off, we're going to go ahead and rinse it with some ice cold water. That's the theory anyways. In practice, recrystallization kind of sucks. For the sake of demonstration, you can see that I put the caffeine on top and all the yellow stuff at the bottom, but you can clearly see that there's still some yellow stuff left in the caffeine. That's because this process isn't quite 100% efficient. Some of the yellow stuff turned into a solid and got stuck in the caffeine. It's just a common problem with recrystallizations. I would do something more efficient like column chromatography, but I don't have the resources to do that. So we're doing the poor man's method of just doing it over and over again until it starts to work. So to redo that recrystallization over and over again, we're first going to need to take the caffeine from the top and then we're going to need to dissolve it in water again so that we can redo the crystallization. Again, just add a minimal amount of water. And then we'll heat it up with stirring and we'll try and get everything to dissolve. Now, if you look closely, you can see it's got a nice little Mountain Dew pea color to it. Now keep note of that because with each recrystallization, we want to start to see that yellow color go away. So we'll go ahead and put it on ice here. You'll notice the crystals are a lot whiter than the solution. That's recrystallization in action. Each time the crystals form, they're a little more pure than the last time. So we'll go ahead and filter off the caffeine again. We'll add more water here. Then we'll heat it till it dissolves. Recrystallize. And we'll filter it off one more time. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it here. Uh, these crystals are pretty good and white. So I think we're good to go on to drying. So this is our final product. You can see we got these white-ish crystals here. It's not 100%, but uh, yeah, I'm tired of this, so I'm gonna stop. So we're gonna go ahead and dry these out on a really low heat. Fortunately, Goodwill's the gift that keeps on giving. So this little coffee warmer will do just fine. So after letting it sit for a day, we come back and we can see that the caffeine is all dried out.
Then we're going to transfer it to a small little metal dish. One like this. You don't want the walls on this dish to be too tall or the caffeine's not going to be able to escape. Next we're going to put the little metal dish into a big glass beaker like this one. I'm going to try and do it gently with these tweezers. Then we're going to need to cover it somehow. I'm going to use this 500 milliliter flask of water. And then we turn on the heat. So now that we've got it all set up, I can explain to you what this process is doing. So caffeine is one of those weird solids where when you heat it up, instead of becoming a liquid, it just says, fuck being a solid, I'm a gas now. And then it's, it's just a gas now. We can see that here as we heat it up, we're starting to get these white vapors coming off it. That's gaseous caffeine. Then since the caffeine has nowhere to go, and the sides of the container are pretty cold, the caffeine starts to collect on the sides of the container. And this is where some problems start to show up. You can see the caffeine in the middle actually seemed to have just turned in completely into a liquid, which I didn't even think was possible. Theoretically, it's supposed to stay a solid the entire time, but I think I know why it did this. In chemistry, usually chemicals are supposed to have a set melting point, but sometimes when there's impurities in the chemicals, and when, especially when they're very impure, the chemicals can have a much lower melting point. So I think it's possible that all the impurities made the caffeine actually become a dirty liquid. What's important to note is that there's no liquids in any of this area here. If there were liquids here, then that would mean that there's impurities in the final product. So from here, you're just going to keep doing this until all of the liquid in the middle disappears, or until you get bored like I do. And this is the part where you remove the dish of contaminants in the middle while trying not to breathe in a lethal dose of caffeine. And now it's just a game of trying to get this out of the container. I use these tweezers here to try and break some of it loose. And then you just try and pour it in without getting it all over the place. And voila, pure caffeine. Like and subscribe.